Russian author Vladimir Nobokov once said, life is a great surprise. He said, I do not see why death should not be a greater one. But for some people, death is not just a surprise, but carries a shock value, silliness, irony, and even amusement. Welcome to Nutty History. Today we're looking back at some of the most unexpected, bizarre, and absurd deaths recorded in human history. Not the closet. When Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet hit theaters at the end of the 16th century, it surely inspired many teens and young adults to seek that forbidden love and die for it. But we can't say for certain that was the plan for James Betts and Elizabeth Spencer. In 1667, Elizabeth's father, John Spencer, was the master of Corpus Christi College in the prestigious city of Cambridge, and James Betts was a young undergraduate who fell in love with the forbidden fruit, the master's daughter. James was enjoying a lovely afternoon tea with his sweetheart when Elizabeth's father unexpectedly returned home and Elizabeth, in her panic, shoved poor James into a closet. The unfortunate student didn't know that the extremely suffocating closet only opened up from the outside and Elizabeth got so busy tending to her father that she forgot about him for a few hours. By the time she came back for him, James had passed away from asphyxiation. In proper young love fashion, Elizabeth gave up on life as well in her grief. Swallowing a mouse. For Englishmen, chivalry could be dangerous when you mix it with love. In the 19th century, as the Industrial Revolution took hold of the nation, factories and mills cropped up like wild mushrooms in almost all English cities. Rodents rung amok in such places, and that was no exception in 1875, where a young woman was traumatized when a mouse galloped on her workstation. Her shrieks drew a lot of attention from co-workers, especially the one gallant man who was looking for his chance to be noticed by her. So he jumped into action and grabbed the mouse to be her hero. But the mouse wiggled out of his hands and disappeared in his sleeve. And then it became his turn to scream like a girl. <coughs> Somehow the noise made by the man panicked the mouse and the mouse saw a dark hole and dashed to hide in it. Now, unfortunately, the hole happened to be the mouth of the concerned gentleman. Now mice can survive without sufficient air for quite a while. And in its desperation to find an exit, it tore the man's innards inside out as the poor guy died in agony. Love kills, so don't try to save a girl you don't know from a mouse. The Addiction for Lampreys In late November of 1135, the King of England, Henry I, was enjoying a honey trip to Lyons, but he was also missing his favorite dish, lampreys. The lampreys are eel-like fish that do not look savory at all, but happen to be quite delicious, and Henry was definitely in love with them. He ignored his doctor's advice to have a large bowl of lampreys, to the point where he ate till he started feeling kind of sick. Now his sudden sickness and fever were quite a surprise to his courtiers and servants because despite being in his late 60s, the king was actually quite athletic and lean and spry. Lampreys are also known as vampire fish for their horrible set of teeth. And perhaps they sucked the life out of the king because he didn't survive the night after having his last happy meal. So lesson learned, don't eat lampreys. Let us know in the comments though if you ever have. Death Over No Dance Today, music composers look like graduates of Hogwarts instead of Berkeley's with their wand-like batons that they wave to keep musicians on rhythm. But in the good old 17th century, they used to carry around a giant freaking staff like a Gandalf to keep time in concerts. Jean-Baptiste Lully was one of the few composers who would regularly perform for the entertainment of the French king Louis XIV. And one night, he accidentally bludgeoned his foot with that heavy, heavy staff. Now, ordinarily, this would have been a regular injury, but gangrene festered on the injured foot, and when doctors recommended medical amputation, Lully backed off claiming he would rather die than live with the inability to dance, and that's exactly what he did. He passed away in Paris and was interred at the Notre Dame de Victoire Church, where his marble bust adorned monument can still be seen today. As subsequent surintendants of the king's music, Louis Lully, Jean-Baptiste Lully Fils, and Jean-Louis Lully all had successful musical careers tripped on his own beard. Six times mayor of a town in Bavaria, Hans Steininger was most popular for his four foot tall beard that he used to carry around in a special purse. Yeah, a purse for a beard, a beard purse. 
but apparently the purse alone wasn't good enough for all occasions. When a fire broke out one night in the town in 1567, Hans had to run out of his home without having time to prep, and he stumbled on his beard in the dark. The fall broke his neck, and the mayor became the first casualty of the town fire. The beard was the literal reason for his rise and fall. An Alarming Death in the 19th century, Sam Wardell was a lamplighter in New York whose job involved lighting street lamps in the evening as well as dousing them come early morning. There was a slight issue that the man was a heavy sleeper, and even the noise of an alarm clock wasn't enough to wake him up. But need is a mother of invention, and Sam came up with a Rube Goldberg device-like contraption that would make rocks fall off a shelf when the alarm clock went off to create enough noise that it would wake him up. However, one night he had friends over and he pushed his bed under the very shelf with rocks on it to make space for dancing and drinking. Say it with me now, uh-oh. Tired and drunk, the poor man forgot to move the bed before falling asleep that night and in the morning when the alarm went off, his own invention crushed him to death. The Irony of Starvation Remember when our parents warned us to chew before swallowing? Thomas Otway's story was one of riches to rags as the famed dramatist fell on hard times in his later years and was driven to beg for food. One of his old fans happened to recognize the poor artist and offered him a guinea, a gold coin that used to be one of the most precious currencies in early modern Britain. Thomas Otway jetted to the nearest bakery to purchase a roll, but in his desperation he choked on the very first bite he attempted to swallow and passed away on the spot. Now that is just sad. Victim of Brags Milo of Croton was perhaps the strongest ancient Greek who ever lived. He was also the first fitness guru in history as well as a six-time wrestling champion at the ancient Olympics. Unfortunately, with age, the strength waned but vanity remained. He was traveling in the countryside when he met a villager trying to split a stump with wedges and hammers. The villager recognized him and Milo boasted that he could split the stump with his bare hands. As the villager left to fetch food as gratitude for Milo, the Olympian pushed his hand in the crack of the stump and tried to tear it apart. But he wasn't as strong as he used to be, and his hands got stuck in the crack. I'd have paid money to see that. Before the villager could return, Milo was found by a pack of wolves or a lion who devoured the helpless athlete. I mean, how long a food run did this villager make? The Knife Eater a sailor by trade, John Cummings was so impressed after watching a circus performer's act of knife swallowing in the early 1800s that he actually tried to swallow a knife and succeeded. Nobody told the poor guy that the circus performers faked their act. So Cummings would swallow them whole instead of pulling them out and on one occasion he swallowed four knives in a tavern as a brag and passed three of them out with no ill health effects. The daring man continued to show off his swallowing skills at various taverns and dinners for a year and accumulated 20 knives and a clasp knife case before all those sharp objects ruptured his guts and belly. The Embers of Grief Remember Brutus? Yeah, the same guy who was known for portraying Julius Caesar during the Ides of March. Yeah, that guy. He happened to have a beautiful, loving, and caring wife named Portia. Portia was nuts about him. She was so in love with him that she couldn't even imagine a life without him. When the news arrived in Rome that Brutus had perished during the Battle of Philippi, Portia was so struck with grief that she grabbed hot coals placed in her room for heat and swallowed them like super hot meatballs. Now, it might also be possible that she fell asleep in a locked room with hot coals still burning and passed from carbon monoxide poisoning, and her death was written poetically. Ragnar Lothbrok Father of the great heathen army, scourge of England and France, and husband of the mythical Queen Oslog, Ragnar Lothbrok is arguably the biggest close to real life legend in the history of Scandinavia. It's believed that Ragnar gained fame as a mighty warrior when he vanquished a giant snake guarding the gates of the Gothic princess, Thora Borgenhjord, and took her as his first wife. His reputation preceded him even in England, and when King Eld captured Ragnar and his fleet of Vikings, to make a mockery out of him, he punished Ragnar for raiding Ireland by throwing him in a snake pit where the legendary Viking king perished. The worst sort of below the belt hit. It's a shame that King Edmund Ironside is more likely remembered for his death than his short stint as a ruler of England, which lasted less than a year. His rule was marred by a power struggle against the Danish King Canute, who also had a claim on the English throne. One controversial account claimed that Canute sent an agent to eliminate Edmund. The agent hid in the king's cesspit and shot an arrow where the sun doesn't shine when Edmund sat down to, you know, do number two. 
Heavy is the head, the body, and the company. Henry IV, the Holy Roman Emperor, was holding an informal assembly with his trusted nobles and courtiers on the second floor of the Petersburg Citadel in effort when they were literally swept off their feet as the floor collapsed by their combined weight. Most of the nobles alongside the emperor fell through the ground floor into the cesspit full of liquid human excrement that sucked them in and drowned them. Unlike the Holy Roman Emperor, the first Duke of Clarence, George Plantagenet had a choice about how he would like to drown. The younger brother of the two English kings, George was a turncoat of the War of the Roses who sided with the Lancasters despite being a member of the House of York. Being a royal family member, he was given a choice to choose his punishment when he was found guilty of treason. The man decided to go in style by drowning in Malmsey wine. Not too bad. The Final Salute John Kendrick was a war hero during the American Revolution and became the owner of a merchant navy afterward. In 1794, Kendrick was traded in Macau when he docked in Honolulu and helped a local tribal chief to deter an attack from a rival tribe. The next morning, Kendrick ordered his ship, the Lady Washington, and an allied British ship, the Jackal, to celebrate their win with a cannon volley. Unfortunately, the gunner of the Jackal forgot to unload the cannons before firing, and one of those cannonballs hit John Kendrick while he was having breakfast in the captain's cabin. Just smashed him and his eggs and bacon right there. For real, for real though, that was kind of a Jack Sparrow kind of mistake, right? Thanks for watching Nutty History. If you would like to see more videos like this one, please like and share this video and subscribe to our channel.